Hey, Pete. How's it going, Mac? Doing all right. Doing all right. Just talking to smart people, doing a lot of listening. <laughs> Isn't it fun? <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, so I just I want to just acknowledge that we're a few minutes over here, and uh, thank you to our audience who's stuck around a little later than they may have planned to. Uh, it's I, I had a little trouble getting things started, so I want to jump right in with Mac. Um, you know, Mac may be the one who uh, the the connection is sort of the least obvious, but to me, it's completely obvious of why we need a voice like his in this event. So I'm going to try to ask some questions that might uh, might might help anyone see that. Um, well, let's let's start off with a pretty basic one. Do you remember, Mac? What was the first Wikipedia article that really, you know, caught your attention, made an impact, had an impact on your world of whether it's hip hop or publishing or activism? you know, I don't. I think the first time I actually saw a Wikipedia article, I was probably in high school, and I don't remember what it was for. I feel like it might have been research on on a Nat Turner paper I was doing, and. What actually well, you tell people about, just briefly who Nat Turner is? I know we should oh, all know Nat that. Turner. I was doing people on Nat Turner. He was a black revolutionary who um, he was a slave and he learned how to read and he figured out that they should escape. So that's what they did. And it was pretty violent. Um, but I did a paper on that in high school and I was looking for sources. And as you can imagine, living in Vancouver, Washington at the time, it was really hard to find books on Nat Turner. And um, Wikipedia had information on it, but it was it was still really limited. But what I loved about it was that it had sources and through the sources I was able to go and find information I needed like books that weren't even about him had information about him in them and I wouldn't have known otherwise so uh, through Wikipedia uh, sourcing I was able to, to really quickly uh, you know get information in like a rural area so this was this was back in the in the late 90s probably 98. Cool yeah great uh so i've really i've got i've got two uh two questions i'd love to just let you let you talk about each of them um you know first up i'm one of the one of the links that i posted next to your name on our event page was a video that uh from last summer uh, and i really recommend that people go back and take a look at it um it's about a 10 minute interview that mac did with our mayor uh this is during the um the Black Lives Matter protests here in Portland. It was really when things were getting hectic over the summer when uh, federal officers had come in and there was a lot, there was tear gassing almost on a daily basis. Um, there was, you know, the, the local police force has since been found in many court cases and journalists to have been overly aggressive, et cetera. And in the midst of all this, the mayor came out um, to like out to the protests and Mac gave a pretty uh, substantial interview uh, in the midst of all that mayhem. And so the reason I, I'm kind of calling this up is that it's the kind of thing that like that is a unique moment to be able to to have a, a direct unmediated conversation with a, a significant politician. Uh, but Wikipedia by its standards would probably not really consider that a reliable source because Wikipedia wants things that come from an entity that has an editorial board, that has a, you know, a reputation of uh, of, uh, of, of fact checking and things like that, and doesn't generally want something that's just from an individual. So Mac, I was wondering if you could kind of comment on that, like what was the significance of a moment like that to you? Forget about Wikipedia for a second, just like in terms of its impact on the city we live in. Um, and what do you think of a publication, you know, with standards like that? What kind of, what should the standards be? Well, you know, I think it's um, I think it speaks a lot to the way that information is disseminated in general. You know, uh, we always talk about trust. It's the way that uh, we as people process information is through trust. And I think that it, when you look at something like Wikipedia, it's kind of seems to me like it's coded to kind of think the way that a person would, right? Like a person would say, well, I can trust this source and so I can take this information and use this for other inputs. And Wikipedia just does the same thing. So if you have a moment, like we're talking about this speech where I talk with a Ted Wheeler or this conversation that I have with a, a, a Ted Wheeler and a lot of information is really is really covered. There's a lot of ground that gets covered in there. And he gives a lot of solid answers or, or non-answers about things. And in, and in that, as you're saying, it, it's, it can't be used in Wikipedia to tell a story. You know what I mean? just because of the way that it was captured. It was captured by people on video, by a lot of people on video, it was captured by the news, but um, they didn't you know, actually run it, 
a ran like you know pictures of it but didn't actually run the story so therefore it falls outside of this you know and so i think that uh, whenever you're looking at information and trying to you know uh, send information up into a larger world it has to have certain standards to it but it is difficult if you have you know the independent journalists are doing things like we have today just because the the media sources that have the editorial boards and whatnot are typically corporate media and therefore they have their own agendas or their you know their influence you know you have a lot of people say i can't i just can't uh, run that story they just can't run that they're, story they're playing a role of gatekeepers and right and so the kind of plays into that gatekeeper exactly nature. yeah and so it just it just uh, plays into that it's, it's, it's a part of it i think it's um at times it can be difficult if you're trying to to uh, tell a story and you can't get the information on wikipedia back when i used to uh, do you know like a lot of music stuff i used to do a uh, tease rappers that didn't have wikipedia pages you know you know wikipedia page not that important you can't talk to me you know so it's that kind of a thing like having a wikipedia means that someone has actually approved you that someone has it's like having a check on twitter you know yeah, yeah. So it, it becomes this uh, this sort of marker of status, which it really isn't intended to be, and like some of the accountability around that doesn't exist because it wasn't intended to be a marker of, right. of status. And that's not Wiki's fault. Yeah. But the thing is, when you become so powerful in the world, then people just bend to power. So if people say, well, you know, in order to have a Wiki, there's standards, so therefore it itself becomes a standard. You know, yeah. so like now uh, uh, people will actually like a source Wikipedia <laughs> as their source when Wikipedia is demanding sources. So it's like the calculus is being done, but you don't know how to do the start equation sometimes. So you yeah. come out with a different thing than you expected. Cool. So, you know, the other the other angle I wanted to come at you from is, uh, you know, especially now that you've heard some of our other speakers and gotten a bit more of a sense of how important that sense of community is to Wikipedia and the ability to create something together across you know, national borders, across linguistic barriers, uh, different experiences, different education levels. Um, I, you know, I'm curious what about that resonates for you? Are there, are there elements, you know, I'm thinking about the Black Lives Matter protests, but you know, maybe in your work as an editor too, uh, where, you know, where there might be disagreement in a community, but it ends up like talking through that disagreement ends up to producing a better product or to people learning something. Is that is that a dynamic that you feel like you can see elsewhere in your work? Definitely. Um, in fact, that kind of started for me is this seeing this a community, first of all, the Wikipedians is, is, is really cool because I never knew it existed until about a couple of weeks ago. We started talking to me about it. Um, but the first day that uh, you and I had actually met at Lens Park several several months ago, and you had talked about you know your wiki, uh, work in Wikipedia, you know, and kind of uh, what are sources and stories that you can tell and you can't tell, and how, kind of how that kind of you know how the world works on on this end. Um, I started thinking about that a lot, and that actually played into a lot of how I I uh, you, you know as an independent journalist, I thought about you know a lot about how if I you know tell this story as an independent journalist, is it actually history? If we're looking at Wikipedia's history, I tell this story, I don't have an editorial board, but if I tell this story to a Richard Reed at the uh, Seattle Times, he can tell my story mm -hmm. and now our story is real. So I think it, it definitely has real world applications because the story that you leave uh, behind, especially through a, 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 something as messy as like, you know, revolution and and changing politics and you know and and and, and thought a revolution and economic revolution all these kind of things the story that as you leave behind is so important because everyone at the end of the day wants to be on the right side of history but you can't be on the right side of history if no one is telling your story so knowing how to tell your story is super crucial to being able to not only achieve the change that you want but to to communicate the change that you're making to others so that they you know can understand yeah. what is it that you're doing because at the yeah. end of the day it's mostly information game you know and that actually leads me to uh you know i got i got kind of a follow-up and uh i don't know how we're getting towards the end of our time here so i'll just make it quick but you know something that i've noticed in the in the black lives matter protests that uh that you know in 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 a variety of different uh instances is that people who are very involved in the protests often have instincts that run completely counter to everything I know 
from a world of where you're trying to express yourself to the media, where you're trying to express a message that then is picked up in the news, where the public can understand what it is you're trying to say. So, you know, my instincts, my thought is that if you have a protest, it's because you want to be on the news. It's because you want the public to understand what is your point of view? What is it that you're working towards, right? But there's a lot of people who are involved in it who have a much more sort of pure passion for the outcomes that they want. And they don't really care if someone really understands everything. So I, I don't have a, I, I don't know. I wonder if you could just riff on that a little bit because it's sort of a point of confusion for me. You know, they often say that, you know, that what's the phrase that the riots are the, you know, the voice of the unheard, you know, the, are the voice of the unheard, right? Um, and I think that's important to keep in mind when we talk about, you know, how people in the midst of protests, especially in, again, in media, you're gonna go to a protest in the midst of the passion and ask people questions and then you're gonna get passionate answers. But beyond that, I think that oftentimes those people are beyond words. So it really doesn't matter what they say at that point. And they haven't come out to, at that point, some people are not out there anymore to speak. They're not out anymore to de deliver a message. Pe in, in their minds, the message is clear and all that they have left is action. So there's definitely, you know, a, a variety of people across that spectrum. There's people who want to communicate. There's people who don't want to communicate. There's, one, there's people who want to fix things. There's people who are not interested in fixing anymore. And I think that's a wide, you know, if you include all those people together, it's a wide coalition. And so you see a lot of information that's a, a designed to take those people and break them apart. 